Okay then, so in the last lesson we added this light and dark theme functionality using a new Alpine store, but when we refresh the page it reset to the default theme which was the light one again. And instead I want to persist the user's choice in local storage in the browser, so that when a user leaves the site and comes back again or just refreshes the page, we grab that user preference from local storage and then we update the Alpine store with that value. Likewise, whenever a user changes the theme and updates the store manually, we want to save that new value to local storage again. So it's actually going to be pretty simple to do this. All we need to do is come to the theme store in the outline page and just update a couple of things. The first thing I want to do is set the local storage value inside the toggle function because we only run this function when a user manually changes the theme by clicking on the icon, right? And at that point, once we've updated the value of the dark state to be either true or false, then we want to save the theme preference to local storage as well. So to do that, we can just use the local storage API by saying local storage and then using a method called set item and invoking it. And this allows us to set a new local storage item, which we're going to call theme, that's the key, and the value of that should either be dark or light as a string. Now to work that out, we're going to use a ternary by saying this dot dark and evaluating that value. If it's true, then we'll return the value dark and a colon. If it's false, we return light. So depending on what the value of this dark state is in the store, then we're storing either the string dark or the string light in local storage, okay? So next, we want the initial value from local storage when the app first loads instead of hard coding it right here. So to do that, we can get rid of this value and just replace it with an expression which is local storage again. Then we're going to use a method called getItem to get the theme value from local storage. And then we'll see if that is equal to the string dark, okay? Now, if that theme key exists in local storage and its value is dark, then this expression returns true. And that will be the initial value for this dark state in the store. If the theme value is light or if it doesn't exist at all in local storage, then this expression returns false. And that would be the initial value for the dark state then. And that's all we need to do. We're now saving the user's choice in local storage whenever they manually change the theme. And we're also loading it when the app first starts as well. All right, so moment of truth. Let me just refresh to begin with. Yeah, we get the light theme. If I click on dark and then refresh, yep, it's dark by default to begin with because we're grabbing that data from local storage. If I click this again and refresh, then yep, it's light to begin with. Awesome. See if this works again. And one last time for good luck. Yep, cool. Okay then, so now this all works. We have a working light and dark theme for the application. Okay then my friends, so that's this small course pretty much complete now and hopefully you can see how easy it is to use Alpine with Laravel and HTMX together to sprinkle on a little bit of browser interactivity. Now I said in the previous course, which was the Laravel with HTMX one, that this project is going to be something that I carry on and add more features to and services and technology, etc. And this Alpine course was kind of the first step to that. So I do intend to add more features as well in the future and create courses for those features. And I think next I'm going to add authentication to this project and I'll show you how that can work with this stack as well. So stay tuned for that course coming soon. So then my friends, I really, really hope you enjoyed this series and you learned something along the way. If you did, please, please, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot. And if you want to access all of my YouTube courses without adverts, also get access to premium courses and early access courses as well, you can do at netninja.dev. You can sign up for NetNinja Pro, which is just $9 a month and also half price for the first month with this promo code right here. And for that, like I said, you get access to every course without adverts, without YouTube adverts. You also get access to exclusive courses not found anywhere else. You get access to my premium courses on Udemy and also early access to all of my YouTube courses as well. So the link to this page to sign up is going to be down below. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this series and I'm going to see you in the very next one.